Rhonda Heritage Park is one of South Wales' most well-known collieries. Sister to the Universal, created by one of the biggest coal merchants in Wales. This is the story of the Rhonda Heritage Park and we will be exploring it today. Well, what an absolute miserable day to say the least. Um, welcome back to the channel. I haven't really done these exploring videos for a while because I've been working on other projects and took a little bit of a break. So today's one, we are going back into the coal mining world. Hence why I am getting soaked for, because I am going to the Rhonda Heritage Park, which is the old Lewis Merthyr Colliery. So I'm going down to get my bus now and we will have to change buses halfway there but where we are changing has us in a really really cool but for the time being let's have a look at the history of the Rhonda Heritage Park or the Lewis Merthyr Colliery. Coal mining across the Rhonda began around the 17th century the Welsh village of Tree Havard had two pits opened by 1850, called the Havard and the Coid Kai, which would later be incorporated into today's colliery. William Thomas Lewis, the Lord of Mercer, purchased these two pits and sunk the Bertie and the Trevor shafts. The Lewis Mercer Consolidated Colliery's Limited employed some five thousand men and producing almost million tons of coal annually. Baron Lewis also purchased many other mines across South Wales, such as the Lady Lewis Colliery in Rondavach, and of course the Universal Colliery in Singenes. Following the disaster at Singenes, the Lewis Mercer came under safety questions, which would see them make changes to improve them. The colliery would be sold to the Powell Duffering Company in 1929. Here we are now in Hopkins Town, halfway to to Harvard where I'll be coming up to Lewis Mercer very soon. Behind me though is what's left of the T Mouse Colliery, which was a sister colliery to the Lewis Merthyr. It was this is one of the shafts called the Hetty Shaft was left. We're gonna have a more of a locker in now. But this was opened by John Calvert. It would become one of the leading collieries in the Port of the Hopkins Town area. Um, it did suffer a disaster, like I said, 63 men died after fire ignited from a break a wooden brake stop for one of the mechanical machines used to drive the drams. So all that's remaining is Hetty Shaft. It is open one time a year. I think it's at the end of this month it opens. Could possibly return here. We'll see, but we're gonna have a look at it first. Can't really go up to it, that's the thing. If you can't hear me it's because it's raining. Can't really go up to it but you can see it opened in 1875 and that's the wheel. It is quite a deep seam. One of the first ones to open in the area. But now let's just carry on a little bit and have a look at the other side. You can see what's left by here as well, like the side of the winding house. A couple of the buildings, you can see where the rest of the pit used to be behind those tree lines. But there's the wheel, like, peeping out a little bit. I can't even just get onto the wall to have a look. It does say trespass as the rules are prosecuted. Now I'm going to head across the road back to the bus stop because it's time to put the Tree Harvard for the Ronda Heritage. Let's do it. 
You don't realise how much mining is like massive in these areas of Wales. Um, for people who doesn't like follow my channel, and I've done loads of mining content, you see stuff at like this, our own villages like Trehavad. Like if you watch my thing in this documentary, you got the National Mining Memorial. If you watch my Avavan documentary, you got the Merthyr Vale Memorial. Plus the, all the Avavan memorials. And in Bargoid near me, they have two miners' heads. But we'll have a look at this little art mural on top. You can see is the Lewis Merthyr Colliery. Down here is the village and the people who worked in these mines. Something quite spectacular to see. Here we are now at the Lewis Mercer Colliery and we're here next to the famous miner's lamp. I think it's the like, everlasting miner's lamp which is always going to be lit for the miners who have lost their lives in the South Wales coalfield as you can see by this plaque. And also down here is the 1956 Lewis Mercer Colliery disaster with the names of the people who have died, Ellis Howells, Sylvia Thomas, Arthur Atkins, Trevor Davis, Albert Fox, Gladys Jones, Richard Jones, John Mills and Peter Prophet. This is where you greet you with here, with the front entrance to the museum, but let's have a look at this. And behind me is one of the upcasts or downcasts. You can see one of the wheels and if I move slightly over you can see another wheel in the background so we're going to head in there now and have a look what's there before going underground. I could possibly not be allowed to film underground if it's like the big pit it will be down to like the contraband as it's still a working coal mine but we'll have a look around nonetheless. Right so I've got a little bit of a wait so I'm going to show you outside quickly. So I'm going to have to wait in here until I can get my top guide and then go underground to see it, all the grounds. See the old drams, the above ground train which would carry these drams which is more of a modern equipment. A big tower as well. And some very very old style shops in it too, my empire. And I think this memorial is absolutely beautiful. You might have seen this image on my out of hand off my super is the mine and looking into the distance with all the clocks time at quarter past nine in the morning where the other van disaster happened. I am Charles Penhaligan from Truro in Coral. Came over to South Wales 30 years ago to build a Cornish pumping engine and another company. big all this is. It wasn't our big and big piss, I can say that at least. The big pit one is tiny compared to this, if you remember rightly from the other video, but we'll move on and have a look. I'll try and get a better look at the stock here. So we're going into a different engine house which is more the electric side, then we're going underground. So while we go underground, I will be showing you what life was like underground with this British Page video. Let's see. So let's move on. This is quite a bit of 
So before we carry on, we're gonna look at the middle years of the Lewis Mason Pottery on this next little voiceover. So, and then we'll be going underground. The Powell Dufferin Company closed the Harvard and Koidka shafts in 1933, cutting down production to the two newer shafts. Production was steady following the Second World War and Westminster decided to nationalise all collieries into the National Coal Board in 1947, which saw production being slowed down through the 1950s. In 1958, the Lewis Mercer Colliery was merged with the nearby T. Maur Colliery. All coal winding ceased at Lewis Mercer with coaling continuing via the T. Maur and men and supplies only at the Lewis Mercer being remained. By 1969, the colliery had become the team hour of Lewis Mercer. Going into the 1970s and 80s, the coal industry in Wales was declining due to the government preferring to import coal from foreign nations. So that was the middle years of the Lewis Mercer colliery. So now we're gonna go into the lamp room in the Bertie shaft. So let's have a look. So we are in the ground. I'm surprised we didn't allow to bring the camera down. But here we are. Thank you. 
So I am getting absolutely soaked. I just come back from being underground. So we're just gonna have a little wander around the site that was wander now. Like have a look at the Bertie and the Trevor shafts and the winding gear. So let's have a little bit of a wander. And yeah, I just didn't want to talk while the tour was going on. I tried to, but we'll just have a little bit more of a wander. So the Lewis Mercer Quarry 1890, this was opened. There's a bit of some, it looks like cutting equipment, you say the leaf spire, but this is our shaft fire. Well, he told me, the um, tour guide, that all this is some more haulage equipment, more pumping action. So, this one by here is the Trevard, I think, or the Harvard. The Bertie, sorry. This is the Bertie and this is a downcast, so that means the Octodrome will be going down while we go over here to the Trevor and that's an upcast. So let's carry on and have a wander around by it. So now I'm in one of the pit heads. This is the Bertie pit head. We were here earlier, so I'm just going to show you it properly. With me speaking over it, you can see with these models is the men at work. You've got your banksman over in the corner, which I am zooming into now slowly. But unlike the big pit, it does show you a bit more detail here in the Ronda. The tour does only take you 20 miles, or 20 meters, sorry, underground through a drift, because the lift ain't working. There's another part of the banksman's job, by using all the equipment that would have brought them to the surface and whatsoever and the lift I like the big pit which is a bell shaped lift or a, this is where they used to be carried underground in 25 people used to fit in there and they were carried underground on this obviously it's got the dram tracks so the drams can get through but we're going to have a look at the little hole they used to go in the shaft Here's the shaft by it, obviously it's been capped so it's not completely open and like the um, Trevor shaft. But there's a couple of more mine workers you can see. Timber they used to be carried underground to bit reinforce the roof with the steel. But yeah, let's have a look around quickly. We have access to the post winding house the engine walls, but I don't know, I'm not sure. So let's have a look. Just found out you can't access the access on like the big pit, which is obvious because they are exhibitions itself. But let's have a look around now. We could re access the lamp room. We'll have a look again at the lamp room properly. But I'm going to show you some of these equipments by a uh, and a huge chimney stack and explain what the chimney stack is there for. As you can see here is a huge, huge, huge chimney stack. This chimney stack used to release steam because this engine room was powered by steam. So this, they did say, as you've seen in the video doing the tour, that it was one of the largest engines in Britain and Lewis Mercer being the largest colliery in the Ronda, this chimney stack used to release all the steam from the power. It did used to be one down there, the tour guy did say, Peter, that um, it was knocked down. They got into a lot of trouble for knocking it down, but this one has been preserved very well and very nicely. And now we're going to have a look at some of the haulage and cutting equipment. First thing I do want to show you, this is a cutter. You see it in the big pit in one of the exhibitions. This is, used to cut coal, coal from the side. You can see it's a very big equipment. It has, by here, what you can see is a conveyor belt. But, it used to basically get the men 
out of the coal, really. Out the coal line. So with these equipment coming in, it was less men working down on the coal face. We are going to see a little bit more by here in a minute. But we're going to go over here to another part, which is a coal transport train. Another cutter, almost more like a train this one is. Where the, <laughs> with the um, tour guy said, a man needs to be positioned in here, squeezing in here to work. The conditions were tough. It did obviously approve as the 70s and 80s. So let's have a look at some of the drams we have here and the train. This is where we were earlier, Team Out Colliery on the way in Hopkins Town. This is the last drama call from 1983. It was the hitcher, the banksman, the winder, and the electrician. We have another last drama call, and just a couple of coal drams by here. I don't know if there is actually real coal. Yep, that is real coal. It's quite cool to look at the history of the area here. And by here it looks like an absolute huge haulage transport train, possibly underground. You, I don't know to be honest, but it does have a massive haulage to it. It would have carried loads and loads of tons of coal. It is quite something to see, in fairness, how like we started looking at different types of mining equipment. Now we're going into the modern age by here with all these cutters and equipment. And almost like diggers, stuff that you can pick up the coal with by here. This is the last ever drama coal to be raised in the Ronda Valley. 30th of June 1986 at the Mardi Colliery. And I think this is possibly what could be seen as one of the saddest moments in the area that coal production ceased for good on this day. It's a big drama call and it's attached to another train on its journey back to the surface. So before we go into the lamp room, I'll show you the entrance of the drift in a minute. Obviously we're not going to go down there because I've already been down there and I don't want to be kicked out of fans from here. But I'm going to show you something that Basically World War Two. It is an Anderson shelter, so and what the world wars mean for coal mining. But before we jump onto that, this is the final part about the history of the Lewis Mercer colliery. If there was air raids during World War Two and you had one of these in your garden, this would have been the shelter that kept you safe from the German Luftwaffe. It was hidden and the dirt earth mounds where people would pretty much plant flowers to make it disguise from the German planes. But this is what an Anson shelter would mean and coal to the war was unbelievable, the production of coal to basically power the Royal Navy and the war effort. This is why I'm going to show you this little sign by here which does explain that very well. It's called the Dig for Victory. It's not just coal, it was down to planting your own food. So you can survive off basically natural foods rather than the rationing. I thought it'd be cool to walk in amongst the clever trap, the winding gear and everything. See, this one is not attached. To be honest, I don't think anyone's attached. I just think they just take it down the drift anyway. Yeah. But let's head up towards the lamp room quickly then before we carry on and have a look at what the exhibitions inside are like. Have grub and then possibly maybe show you something else that's around you. And this is the lift area for the Trevor shaft. Um, you can see where the lift is, the drams are called. Contraband. Do you all know what contraband is? Contraband is basically stuff you cannot take underground, whether it's cigarettes, anything battery operated. This is more like if you go deeply underground, but contraband could have caused explosions, and that's the thing. 
with these collieries, they need it to prevent all this happening, all these bad things, so St. Guinness doesn't happen again, especially in a colliery which was owned by William Thomas Lewis. So let's have a quick look in here, this is the lamp room. You can see where all the miners numbers and lamps are. Checking all the oxygen, see if they're off. And there's a descent board which will tell you like how many descended, the tallies. There's a couple of rooms by here. March 14th, 1983, production would end at the Lewis Mercer and T. Mal Corroys. By 1990, there was no deep coal mines remaining in Wales, but the Lewis Mercer was not knocked down or left abandoned. It was pres preserved, and in 1989, the Lewis Mercer Colliery reopened as the Rhonda Heritage Park. It became a living museum in which is one of two in South Wales, with the other being the Big Pit Colliery in Blaine Avon. In 2000, a replica miner's lamp monument was unveiled at the entrance of the Rhonda Heritage Park. According to the plaque on the monument, it was erected as a memorial to those who perished through accident, disease or disaster lost their lives otherwise suffered as a result of the mining industry in the South Wales coal fields. I'm going to end the video walking through this park, uh, park, park, car park because we discovered the first two shafts, the Harvard and the Koika, which you learn about in the first like historical look back of this area, was actually positioned in this car park and I didn't know this until the um, Poor guy told us that the only reason that William Thomas Lewis closed this, like these shafts in this car park, is because it's so close to the river and and the tunnels were getting flooded. So we're gonna head back towards um, Hopkins Town, towards the Haiti shaft, to end this video because. I think it'd be nice to end it right on the banks of what, where the industry was powered mainly and where settlements were built around the River Taff. So let's end it there. Right, let's end it here. we we got the, off the bus, we're going to back on now. Outside the Haiti shaft and behind me you've got the River Taff pounding violently with the weather. So guys, if you did enjoy today's video, Please give it a like and share it, because the more people see it, the better. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel for more. I've got documentaries and something good for Halloween coming up. So keep your eyes peeled on that. And yeah, just going to leave you with this.